Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, The World of Joy. You're listening to me, Alina, and I hope you're all doing great and amazing. So as you can see from the title of today's video, it's about how can you progress from a band five to a band six nurse in the UK. So if you're not a nurse working in the UK, this video may not be beneficial for you. But if you've got family and friends who are nurses and working in the UK, please do share this video with them because I'm going to share really top tips on how can they progress from being band five to a band six nurse. Starting off with besting all the jargons, what do we mean by banding? What exactly is banding in the NHS? So if we have to think about banding, we have to go a little bit more back and back, like recap it further to 2004 when agenda for change came in so if you are a uk nurse you would have seen in your pay slip afc agenda for change where the nhs decided all the unions and everyone together they decided to have harmonious and fair pay for every individuals or professionals working within the nhs so you can see this banding from band one to band nine. But banding specifically means for us as nurses, uh, the pay scale, how much pay that we're getting. And please note that it's just for professionals other than doctors, dentists, or senior managers, except for them, everybody in the NHS or working with the NHS would be in the agenda for change. So for example, a nurse, a newly qualified nurse, just out from the uni, they would enter as a band five nurse or when they recruited to be a registered nurse, they would enter as a band five nurse in the UK. And their entry point pay scale would be approximately £25,000 a year. A band six nurse in, you know, the difference, I'm just sharing with you the difference of the pay scale. The entry point of a band six nurse would be approximately £32,000 per year. I will share all the links um, to the Agenda for Change or, you know, the handbook that you can obtain from the NHS website. I will share those links uh, down in the description box uh, for you so you can check that out as well. So why are we discussing about the pay scales here for band fair and band six? Of course, everyone would like to know what would they earn if they progress or go up in the ladder in their job. So that's why I just thought to mention what would be the pay scales that are expected when you progress to your band six job. For example, the maximum, the top point that a band five nurse could get, which is almost after five years of experience, would be £31,000 a year. But that is the entry point of a band six nurse. So you can see a bit of difference in there. So I hope you got a little bit of info on what do we understand from banding within the NHS. So now let's move over to the next part. If you're progressing to your band six nurse, what are the kind of jobs that's available for you? What am I going to do as a band six nurse? What are the options or opportunities or scope for you? What are your job responsibilities? As a band six nurse, you can progress to as many roles as you like. So when you are a band five nurse, you would be a bedside nurse or a staff nurse who would be registered, like a registered nurse, working in the bedside, looking after your patients and making sure your patients are safe, uh, providing that holistic care to your patients. When you move over to a band six nurse, of course, your job responsibilities would be increasing, but then you can choose what sector that you would like to go for. So there are different opportunities available. Let's start from the first one, specialist roles. So if you are a nurse who absolutely love clinical side of the nursing job, uh, the bedside uh, part of the job, or if you would like to enhance your skills, enhance your knowledge, become a specialist in what you're doing, then this is for you. So you would have seen different jobs in maybe NHS websites or indeed.uk, different websites. I'm not mentioning much of them, but you could see these jobs available out there for you. Some of the examples of the specialist jobs would be um, a pain specialist nurse. So if you are interested in um, acute pain therapies, uh, epidurals, 
the management of pain, acute pain in your patients, you can be a pain specialist nurse. We have specialist nurses in chemotherapy, cancer treatments. If you're interested in the dialysis, um, AKI, acute kidney injury management, etc., you can be a renal nurse. Um, if you are interested in orthopedics, you can be an orthopedic specialist nurse. If you're interested in critical care, intensive care, etc., you can be a critical care outreach nurse, commonly known as CCOT. So there are different opportunities available for you. Secondly, other than the specialist jobs, you can go into an educator role. So you can be a clinical educator or you can be in a more corporate side of the job, like what I'm doing now as a practice educator. The main difference is that the clinical educator would be more clinically based. They would be teaching the new nurses, um, the students from the university, mostly the new nurses and the staff there. They're making sure in their clinical, in their department, the nurses are given appropriate training, the skills are enhanced, they're able to work uh, clinically really efficiently and look after their patients really well. The clinical educator would have, um, you know, clinical duties as well. So they would be expected to work clinically as well. While a practice educator, which is more of a corporate side of the job, they can, they're more involved in um, universities, the student placement, you know, the universities in the UK, how to place the nursing students in different departments, making sure, um, you know, the placement area is safe for the students. The practice educators are also involved in uh, training the internationally recruited nurses um, on how to become a nurse, you know, registered nurse in the UK. If you're, a, if you're a nurse trying to come to UK, you would have heard about OSCEs. So the practice educators are involved in teaching OSCEs, uh, making sure the newly qualified nurse are well settled in, giving them trust wide trainings, etc. So I can speak much more about the educator role in detail in our next video, which would be on my experience as an educator in the UK. The third section that you can go into would be a charge nurse or a sister, which most of the people would go for, because when you are working clinically, you would have seen your in charge or deputy sister, who is a band six nurse. So the main responsibilities of a charge nurse would be middle management, making sure um, the staff are all right, um, involved in the appraisals, making sure the patient flow within the department is, is going really well. Um, basically, the in charge of the whole ward, they're, they're going to run the whole ward. Uh, they would have a manager on top of them, but the deputy sister are also involved in most of the management as well. So if you are interested to stay within the clinical area, that would be a great choice for you. Another band six jobs that are available would be a research nurse. So if you're interested in research or have some qualifications in research within UK or from abroad, you can think about going to research field. So these nurses would be involved in carrying out uh, trust-wide research, making sure the quality of care um, is delivered properly, uh, finding new ways of working. So you can be involved in that, you know, several projects that would be running in the NHS. So that's a great option as well. So these are some of the opportunities or scope in the profession when you are trying to move up to a band six job. There are several others. I haven't mentioned all of them. There are medical device specialists, um, theater practitioners. Um, if you're not a nurse, if you are a physiotherapist or occupational therapist, there are opportunities for you to move up to a senior roles in that. Um, you can go into university and be a lecturer in there. So I'm, just for the purpose of the video, I'm just laying out that options for you. But I can do a separate video on this if you would like me to do. So since we are done and dusted of the basics now, let's discuss on how you can progress from being a band five to a band six nurse in the UK. Some people would like to be staying in where they are, you know, in band five jobs. It doesn't mean that they're not progressing. You can progress, you know, laterally and or horizontally, and you can progress vertically as well, whichever. Um, I have seen my colleagues who are, um, you know, maybe much more senior than me 
or who came after me or with same experience as me staying in the band five jobs and adding in the experiences doing lots of courses specific uh, to their job or where they are working so it's absolutely all right if you have commitments within the family or if you're not ready yet to move over to a band six job so if you're deciding to move to a band six job there are four things that would be really beneficial for you to create as a bucket list. Let me introduce to you the concept of four pillars of advanced practice. So what are you essentially going to do if you would like to progress to your band six role is to add your knowledge and skills into these pillars. So what are these pillars? It has four main components, which are clinical experience, education, research, and management and you can see leadership in the center of it all so you should demonstrate your leadership whatever field that you're working in in every sector of your job as well or every part of your job as well let's start from the first one so what do we mean by clinical clinical is as similar as it is the clinical experience that you have when you apply for a band six job so how long have you worked as a band five nurse with the NHS or maybe in the community or it can be in the private sector, but essential in most of the band six jobs, they're looking for at least one to two years of acute experience. With that acute experience, you should be able to demonstrate that you have the ability to look after patients who are acutely ill in medical wards or surgical wards, wherever that you've worked, it should be of a nature where um, you would have that experience of looking after these patients. The second pillar of advanced practice is education. So what you can do to fill that bucket list now, what evidence can you demonstrate to show that you have done something for education or what have you done to facilitate learning of other people. So let me share some examples with you of what I have done or what I have shown as evidence. So in the ward where I worked, um, I was a link nurse who would teach the teach my colleagues, who would teach my senior nurses on how to do um, resuscitation. So you would have annual update of resuscitation, mandated trainings in your department. So I was a resuscitation link nurse. So every three months, I would have approximately six of my colleagues or the nurses or um, you know senior practitioners whom I, who am I working with, they would be joining um, for a resuscitation training with me. So I, I showed that as my experience as an educator, um, me facilitating learning and the experience of me presenting to a group. So you can show that as an evidence. One of the questions that I normally get from my um, international colleagues is that so nurses who are recruited internationally who have done master's um, degree in maybe in India, Philippines or Nigeria, several countries. Um, so they would have done master's internationally. They would like to know um, if it has been valid in the UK. You can definitely show your experience as an educator internationally when you go for interviews or when you apply for a job but essentially your certificate may not be actually valid if it if it's not meeting the criteria the qualifications that's uh, that's that's in the uk so you would have to do further research for it but you can definitely show the proof that you have quite a lot of teaching experience or supervisory experience of the students or maybe teaching or experience like that internationally when you go for an interviews the teaching or the education pillar can be as simple as you offering some training or some um, you know, supervisory support to the students or the apprentices that you work with. So normally when we have nursing students from different universities come into placements, as a registered nurse, you would be supervising them in the practice. You can show that as an evidence, as simple as it is. Or you can do some, um, you know, local training within your department, providing health education to your patients, or you can do um, trainings for the apprentices that you work with, healthcare assistants that you work with. You can show all these things as an evidence. So essentially, education doesn't mean that you should possess a university degree 
or you should have a qualification like a master's or a postgraduate qualification when you apply for the job. So it's a complete myth, actually. The third pillar we're looking at is management. So as the name clearly signifies, management basically means do you have experience or could you show evidence of your abilities as a manager or managing a ward? So it can be as simple as you being in charge of your ward, maybe on a night shift or it can be a day shift, whichever. So as a nurse, as a band five nurse, have you managed the ward before? Have you been the team leader of your of your group? So let's say you're the team leader of that ward. You are supposed to manage, you know, the you know three other nurses who is working with you, and maybe twenty plus patients who are in the ward. And have you been involved in planning the discharge, um, managing the safe staffing within within your department? Uh, do you have a bit of knowledge about how to roster your staff, how to allocate jobs and delegate jobs to your colleagues, etc. So that's what we are looking for the management. So the last and final one we are reaching there, we are reaching to the end, is research. So you don't need to get much worried when you hear the term research. So research essentially doesn't mean that you have to do like a big project involved in a big research project or anything like that. So, for example, from uh, my own experience, when I applied for the band six job, I showed an evidence of my research experience as being involved in a leadership project. So you would you would have several leadership projects that's running in the NHS. So some of it would be Mary Sequel program, Edward Jenner program, uh, Florence Nightingale um, leadership program, etc. So there are lots of leadership projects out there. So you can participate in one of these which are fully funded. Um, it's part of your career progression. This is part of your continuous professional development. So please do apply for these leadership projects if you see them um, that's been available in your NHS. So when you hear about these projects, the projects or research, whatever, don't get worried that you have to do like a big, uh, you know, innovation or you have to solve a bigger problem. It doesn't mean that. Whatever that you're doing, just just understand that you're just filling in a piece of the puzzle. It's not like you're solving the whole puzzle, just a piece of that puzzle. There are lots of topics that you can choose from. It doesn't mean that you have to do like a bigger project and, you know, execute it. You would have lots of people to support you. And all these programs are at least six to 12 months in um, in the period. So you can get yourself enrolled into one of these programs and be participating in that project. You don't have to innovate anything new. You have to identify a problem in your department and see that uh, what can you do to resolve it. You will get enough support from your senior colleagues as well as people who are very senior in the research, who have PhDs, who are involved in these kind of projects to support you. So bringing that all together, what have we had discussed up until now, I've discussed with you a wonderful approach which I have taken and I think might be beneficial for you as well to add in lots of skills and knowledge into these four pillars of practice, which is clinical, education, research and management. And you should demonstrate leadership throughout these four pillars. If you do this approach, your chances of um, getting into a BAM6 job would be higher. If you have got sufficient evidence to show on all these four pillars, you would be shortlisted easily and you would be, you know, when you're going for an interview, you would be more than like, you know, more likely to be successful in that interview. I can do another uh, video on my experience of going through the interview and how to write the supporting information when you apply for the job um, successfully, um, you know, efficiently. I can do another video about it because this video is pretty much a bit, you know, lengthier at the minute now. I hope you found this video useful, um, hopefully, and it's beneficial for you when you think about moving over to your band six job. Uh, but if you like the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions further, please do let me know about it as well. But I would like to say a big thank you if you're listening to me up until now for your patience for watching this whole video. But I will see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.